Hey, welcome to lesson 2.1, Malaria and Sickle Cell Disease Demo. Uh, the question we're pursuing is how does a fatal disease persist in a population? My name is Laura McGinty. I am a biology teacher at Ballard High School, and it's really great to have you along again. Remember with these videos and PowerPoints, your health and your family come first, so make sure that you're working at your own pace. Uh, whenever it's possible, uh, or if you find it helpful, go through some of the activities with a peer uh, or with somebody in your household and talk to each other as you're going through them. You might find it also helpful to have a notebook or a scrap piece of paper with you uh, to jot down your ideas and record questions that you may have. If you're using the PowerPoint uh, in conjunction with this, uh, read through the slides one at a time, explore the images, uh, take time to explore any of the links that are there uh, as well. With the video, it's helpful to uh, pause whenever you need to, rewind it as often as you need to, uh, to go over concepts. If you do come across something that you don't understand or you find confusing, make a note of the timestamp or the slide number. Uh, and when you finish it uh, uh, and you find that you're still confused, go to your teacher, ask the questions of your teacher, or you can talk to somebody in your house, talk to uh, a peer, uh, about that, and uh, but it's important to really reach out and ask those questions. Finally, when you finish, uh, consider sharing what you've learned. Uh, express your thinking, explain what you're thinking, and this really helps you retain the information as you're making sense of it uh, and processing all of the, the work that you've gone through. There are three goals for this particular lesson. Uh, the first is to explain how populations evolve not the individual, but the populations as a whole. The second thing is to describe evolution using the term allele frequency, which we'll define later on. Finally, your third goal is to analyze allele frequency data related to malaria and sickle cell disease. So looking at some background information first around evolution and allele frequencies, we need to talk about some vocabulary around this. One, we need to understand that a population is, uh, in the terms of evolution, a localized group of interbreeding individuals. Okay, so a, a group that's in the same space that interbreeds with one another. The second thing that we need to understand is a gene pool is a collection of alleles in the population. So let's break that down. Uh, the collection of alleles. Remember, we have to define the difference between allele and gene. Uh, gene, as you recall from the inheritance unit, is uh, coded DNA that uh, uh, produces specific types of proteins which produce particular traits. Alleles, on the other hand, are the versions of those genes, so the different types um, of traits that could potentially be produced. Uh, so like the difference between uh, straight and curly hair or eye color or the ability to roll your tongue or not, uh, those are all different alleles or different gene versions. The gene pool is a collection of all of those alleles. And then finally, allele frequency. Uh, that's how often or how common that particular allele is present in the population. So for example, how many dominant uh, alleles versus how many recessive alleles are in that entire population. If you are looking at the PowerPoint at the same time, there is a link uh, down here at the bottom of this slide that will go into more depth, uh, a little bit more detail uh, about what an allele is. So we're gonna move forward with this information uh, and kind of do a, a thought exercise here. Imagine there uh, is a population of beetles and these beetles come in green and brown colors. You can see the natural habitat here on tree bark um, and you see the chromosomes um, uh, designed here on the beetle so you can see what the allele is. We have some with brown and green. These are brown beetles, and the uh, ones that have two green are green beetles. Predators can see the green beetles more easily than they can see the brown beetles because of the camouflaging effect. This results in an increase in the brown gene frequency. So let's look and see what that means. This first generation here, we're gonna have six beetles. The green beetle, in order for it to be green, it has to have two of the uh, alleles have to be green. For the brown beetle, only one has to be green, so you have to have a brown and a green. That, by the way, means that the brown is a dominant allele 
and the green is the recessive. So we see here that 75% of the alleles are green, 25% are brown. Where did that number come from? Well, when you look, you can see there's one, here's two, and there's three, and that's three out of 12, or one-fourth, that's 25% of the alleles being brown. Now the second generation, you can see here that there's a lot of offspring to consider, but look at these numbers. Because the predator sees the green beetle more easily than it does the brown, we can see that there's actually a decrease in the number of green alleles, but there's an increase in the number of brown alleles. Evolution is a change in allele frequency because these alleles produce heritable traits. I'm going to say that again because that is a really important key factor there. Uh, and if I were in the classroom, I would say this is a note to take down. Evolution is a change in allele frequencies because alleles produce heritable traits. Let's see what that looks like in images. You have 80% green genes in this uh, uh, population right here and 20% brown genes. Okay, and the, you can see the coloration here, for the gene for brown coloration. After a year, because remember, the green ones are easier to see, there's a decrease down to 60% green genes, but an increase in brown genes by 40%. We've had a change in allele frequency because that brown gene is being inherited more often than the green gene is. So let's look at rabbits. Let's take a look at these. Uh, the questions that we're going to answer by analyzing these three images is what alleles are present in the gene pool? And then how does the frequency of alleles change over generations? So first generation right here, second generation, third generation. Okay, we have P representing the dominant A gene frequency, which shows here equals 0.5 and Q is the recessive A gene frequency, which also equals 0.5. Now, what does that mean? Well, you can see here, we have, every rabbit has to have two of the alleles, right? Two of the alleles. So there are two, four, six, eight, 10. 10 rabbits total, that means that there are gonna be 20 alleles present. We could count off, actually, the number of the dominant versus the number of recessive. So there's one little A, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten out of twenty is half. That means the other half is the dominant A. Okay, so that's where that 0.5 comes from. It's a 50%. Five rabbits reproduce, and we now have our second generation. We can see that the dominant gene frequency has increased to 70%, or 0.7 right here, and you could count the number uh, there, but the recessive gene frequency has actually decreased. Okay. Two of these rabbits from this generation reproduce, and we have our third generation where we now have a dominant gene frequency of one and a recessive gene frequency of zero. So you can see that there are no recessive alleles in this third generation. So what alleles are present in the gene pool? Well, in the first, we have dominant and recessive. And in the last, we have only dominant. How does the frequency of alleles change over the generations? Well, the dominant gene uh, increases over time, whereas the recessive allele uh, decreases over time. Taking that information, we are now going to apply it to our understanding of the fatal disease of sickle cell in areas of malaria. Um, you have a worksheet that you're going to uh, use in conjunction with this video from here forward called the Malaria and Sickle Cell Disease Reading and Worksheet. So we're going to use these together. The first thing that you want to do is read and answer the questions on the first page of the Malaria and Sickle Cell Disease Reading and Worksheet. The second thing then is we'll review the data afterwards on the following slides and answer the questions on the back of the worksheet. And then finally, in Lesson 2.2, we'll explain the evolution of sickle cell disease in areas with uh, high versus low levels of malaria. So at this point, pause the video and read this background information about sickle cell disease and malaria. Uh, and you're going to 
do a comparison of these two images here. Uh, write down what you notice, and then there's going to be a prediction or a hypothesis that you're going to uh, make. Um, what's going to happen with the frequency of uh, the A, the, so the HBA, which is the healthy alleles, uh, for hemoglobin is going to increase or decrease. And then what about the S allele, which is for the sickled cell hemoglobin subunit? Uh, you're going to write for high malaria areas and then low malaria areas. Pause the video at this time to go ahead and complete this front sheet of the paper. Now that you've finished that, we're going to move on into the simulation. With the simulations, we're looking at data here. Um, you're uh, we're going to look at the parent population first, so let's do a quick analysis of this. Simulation 2 and Simulation 3 uh, are going to show varying levels of malaria. Uh, and in this first part with the parents, you're going to identify the three genotypes uh, for the gene that codes for hemoglobin subunits in the parent population. What are the starting frequencies for each of those genotypes? And then what are the allele frequencies for the A and for the S alleles? So your table right here is table 1.1 for the parent population. You have your column for genotypes, the number of individuals compared to the total population, the genotype frequency. So remember, we can uh, also indicate these in percentages. So 0.25 uh, would translate to 25%. The allele is, we have the allele A, which is for the healthy hemoglobin, uh, and allele S, which is for the sickled cell hemoglobin. The number of those alleles out of the total number of alleles in the population and then the frequency at which they occur. Pause the video here so you can answer those first two questions. What are the three genotypes uh, in the parent population? What are the starting frequencies for each of those genotypes? And then what are the allele frequencies for A and S? So looking at simulation two, this is the environment with no malaria. We have two tables that we're going to look at. We're going to start off with each one individually first, and then I'll show you both of them together on one slide. This table is going to show the first generation. So we just looked at the parent generation. Now we're going to look at the first generation of offspring in the sample data. You have the genotype, the number of individuals compared to the uh, offspring population, the frequency of those genotypes, the alleles, the number of those alleles, the total number of alleles in the uh, population, and the frequency at which they occur. Okay, so this is generation one, first generation. Now the second generation uh, is same table setup. And we have questions that we're gonna ask with that comparing the two. How did the frequencies of the A and S allele change over time? So parent to first generation to second generation. And what are those trends? And then you're going to explain the trends using what you've learned about sickle cell disease uh, from the inheritance unit, but also from the reading that you've done. So let's take a look at those two charts together. Remember in the, uh, in the parent population, we have an allele frequency of 50% for the A, 50% for the S. Here's your first generation uh, allele frequency section here, and here's the second generation allele frequency here. Pause the video so you can focus in on uh, this data and do your trend analysis. And when you're ready to resume, go ahead and press play. Here's the final part of simulation two where we analyze the graph uh, pictured below here. We've collected data over five generations. Uh, the frequency of the S allele over time is graphed below. The graph shows a rapid decrease in the sickle cell allele frequency in the first generation but that's, uh, that slows down uh, in the later generations. It's still decreasing, but the rate at which it's decreasing is slower. So that by the fifth generation, the allele is not completely eliminated from the population, but it is pretty low. Looking at this graph, we have a great setup here. We have, the, uh, we have a title, we have labeled axes. On our y-axis, we have S allele frequencies. And remember, these again can be also read as percentages. 0.1 is 10%, 0.2, 20%, so on and so forth. Number of generations, so this is kind of an over time. So generation zero, which is the parent, uh, offspring one, offspring two, et cetera. Your task is to provide two explanations, two, two explanations for why the S allele 
persists after five generations. Why is it still there? Pause the video so you can answer this last question in simulation two. Moving to simulation three, this is the environment with malaria. So we're gonna take our original parent population that we started off with, and now we're gonna shift it over to uh, an area where there is high malaria uh, prevalence. So this is our first generation of offspring from that. And you can see, again, the same table setup, genotype, number of individuals, total offspring, frequency. The allele, the number of alleles, total number in the offspring population, and the frequency here. There is also a second generation, which we see in this uh, table right here. So just like I did for the last one, I'm going to show you where they're stacked so you can see the data together. We do have two questions, however, that we need to answer. How did the frequencies of the A and S allele change over time? What are the trends? And explain these trends using your knowledge of sickle cell disease. Same questions as in simulation two, but just different data. So let's look at these. You can see again, parent population was, uh, the allele frequency for A was 50% or 0.5. For S, it was also 0.5. That was for the parent generation. This is generation uh, one or the first generation. There's your allele frequency. Second generation, here's your allele frequency. So pause the video here, answer these two questions uh, about the change in frequency, what are the trends, uh, and explain how those trends occur using the knowledge of sickle cell disease. Finally, we have a graph analysis that we're gonna do. Summarize the trend for each genotype in simulation two and in simulation three. So you're gonna do a cross comparison. So remember, uh, simulation two was no malaria environment. Simulation three, high malaria environment. Breaking down these graphs, you have frequency on the uh, y-axis, you have uh, the genotypes on the x-axis, the colors, the blue represents parent population, first generation is the maroon color, and this, um, yellowish color here is the second generation offspring. Okay, so that's the second generation. Great. The next question is asking you if you think that the trends are going to continue for simulation three, and then explain your reasoning for that. Why, why do you think that they will continue or not continue, as the case may be? Uh, so pause the video at this point to answer those two questions. Last part, checking for understanding. You've explained how populations evolve, not just the individual, but entire populations. You've described evolution using the term allele frequency, so how often this particular allele shows up in a population uh, and how it changes over time. You've also analyzed allele frequency data relating to malaria and sickle cell disease. So your next step at this point is to look back at the predictions that you made on the very front page uh, of our handout uh, and check to see if your hypotheses were supported or not supported by the data. Remember, it's not a matter about being right or wrong. Does the data support the original hypothesis or not? And explain uh, why it does or doesn't, or how it does or doesn't. Finally, uh, check your work using the provided key. So there's gonna be a separate video for you to go over uh, and check your answers with the work that you've done. As always, it's been a great pleasure. Uh, I really appreciate your hard work and your efforts, uh, the time that you're putting into this uh, and, and learning more about evolution. Uh, thank you very much and have a beautiful day.